Hello everyone, how's it going? It has been a while. My name is Dylan and welcome back to the Ride Share Hub. And by a while, I mean like a week. I know I haven't been on this channel um, for like a week now, maybe five days or so. But for me, that's a lot because I try to upload videos daily. But before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 3,000, can you see that? 3,000 subscribers, we just hit 3,000, which for me is huge, and I know for a lot of big YouTubers, like, that's tiny. Um, but yeah, we are growing pretty quickly, and just want to remind you guys, at 10,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a car, right? Pretty crazy. I'm going to be giving away a car that will be good for Uber and Lyft, um, so, you know, if you, if you want a new car, uh, go ahead and click subscribe so you know when we're doing that. And if you're interested in being an Uber or a Lyft driver, you can use my links in the description for a sign-on bonus. But today's video is all about how to get that five-star rating. And this works for both Uber and for Lyft, okay? So I'm just gonna pull up my rating here just to show you guys, you know, where I stand as a, um, this will be just on my Lyft one. Can you see that right there? Four, I'm at a 4.96, uh, 100% acceptance rate. Um, a lot of people don't have 100%, um, but I just like to accept every ride. I'll discriminate. Um, but, and, and there's also a trick why I accept every ride. I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, I'm at 4.96. It's not five stars, but I just wanted to start this video out with a little disclaimer, okay? You're gonna get a passenger here and there that's gonna tip, that's gonna leave you like a four star, three star, or maybe even a one star. You know, that's just how it goes. Sometimes you're gonna meet somebody, you know, out of, let's say every 100 or 200 rides, you're gonna meet somebody who just doesn't like you for whatever reason, or maybe they're having a really bad day, or maybe you accidentally say something that, I don't know, they just don't like, or maybe you try to say a joke, I don't know, whatever it is, and that's just bound to happen, and that applies to, you know, the restaurant industry, Uber, driving for Uber and Lyft, doing retail, you know, you're just gonna meet somebody who just doesn't like you for whatever reason, you know, you, you serve somebody food at a restaurant and they don't tip you, you know, out of a, every hundred customers, you know, you might get a couple people who just doesn't tip you at all. Um, for retail, you might get somebody who leaves you a bad review. I don't know, but for Uber and Lyft, um, definitely you just, you get people every once in a while who gives you a bad rating. Um, so yeah, if, don't worry about maintaining a perfect five stars. If you know, if you're up pretty close, anything 4.95 and above is like really, really good. And um, I mean, passengers don't care too much as long as you're like, you know, at the higher level. If you're like 3.0, then yeah, they probably won't, um, you know, they'll probably cancel on you. But anyways, I'm just gonna go through my top 10 tips to maintain a five star rating or to try to get as close as you can to five stars. So my first tip, this one is super important. It's drive smoothly, drive safely. Okay, this is all time number one tip just to provide your passengers with a great experience. Um, uh, I take Uber and Lyft a lot as passenger, as a passenger, just to get that experience on the other side of the table, or you know, of the wheel. <laughs> and um, one of the great things that I appreciate is just a driver who drives slowly, cautiously, safely. If I feel safe, you know, that's that's going to give me the best experience. Or if you know, if your passenger feels safe, they're going to give you uh, five stars. You know, that that's just uh, plain and simple. So practically, that just means that when you go up to a stoplight. Um, you you uh, slow down slowly. You don't like slam on your brakes. And then when the light turns green, um, just be slow to accelerate. So don't um, you know start racing. And then also with like yellow lights, tr don't try to like speed through them to beat the light. If you know if you're far away and you're you have enough time to slow down, just slow down and just follow all the laws of the road. Um, your pastor doesn't care if it takes them an extra minute or two to get to their destination. They'd rather much, 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 much more rather have a safe experience than getting to their destination like one minute faster. They really don't care that much. And for you, as you know, as a driver, you're really not going to make that much more money if you get there a minute faster. Um, that's just, yeah, that's just how it works. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, be nice. Everybody li loves a nice driver. Um, yeah, just, I would just say, try to be as nice as you can. Don't try to make any, like, offensive jokes or anything that might, like, tick your passenger off. Ask them, hey, how are you? Greet them by their name. Um, to ask them how they are. Don't talk too much about yourself. Try to keep the conversation focused on them. Um, but yeah, all in all, just be nice. 
you know, um, and that's just gonna help you get, uh, you know, close to five stars. All right, so number three. This one is don't talk too much. And this one is pretty funny, but if you ever have been a passenger as well, like if you're a driver and you've never been a passenger, or if you've only taken an Uber Lyft like once or twice, I'd recommend start taking Uber and Lyfts around town, uh, just so you get that, that other experience. And you'll notice, at least I notice as a passenger, is that a lot of my drivers talk like way too much. And they think like, oh yeah, when a passenger gets into my car, this is my opportunity to tell them about my entire life. And sometimes I have drivers who like tell me about their like, one girl was telling me about how she almost got kidnapped in Morocco like three, or no, like five years ago. And I'm like, why are you telling me this? This is like, I, I, you know, I was going to the airport, it was like early in the morning and I'm just like falling asleep. I'm like, can you just be quiet? So yeah, I would just say like, if your pass, if you can tell your password doesn't want to talk, don't talk to them too much. Um, and the e really easy way to gauge this is just to say, um, "Hey, how are you?" And like when you start out the trip, and if they j and if they say good or fine, and don't ask you back how you are doing, that probably means that they don't want to talk. If they say, "Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself?" Then you can say, "Oh, I'm pretty good." And then you can follow up with saying. This is, it's kind of pretty much saying the same thing, but just gauging that interest. You follow up by saying, um, yeah, not too bad. How's your day been going so far? And then that one will really indicate whether or not they want to talk. You know, they might say, um, cause it's an open-ended question. And if they just say good, then that means they don't want to talk. But if they say, oh wow, you know, I had the longest day, blah, 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 you know, or I've had a great day and they share some story with you, that means they pretty much want to talk. So you can kind of gauge that question, which is, hey, how are you? And then how's your day been going so far? And uh, yeah, that way you can gauge whether or not you want to talk. Number four is have waters in your car. I know a lot of drivers don't like this because they don't like trash building up in their car um, or they don't want people spilling. Um, but if, if someone spills a little bit of water, it's not the end of the world. But um, yeah, and I actually have a trick for this one. This one doesn't really apply to ratings, it's more like tips, but I keep all my waters in my center console, and that way um, I like to offer my passenger a water rather than just keeping them out for them to grab. I always say, hey, do you want a water bottle? And they're like, oh, where is it? And they're like, oh, I have it right here. And it's more of like a transaction, they're more likely to tip you, but also just having waters helps with ratings. Um, if you leave them out, people are gonna tip you five stars. Like because that just shows that the driver cares. So yeah, having waters out and snacks and stuff, you can try that, um, but yeah, the same way, I keep them in my center console or up front and just offer them to them. Hey, do you want like a power bar or something? So the next one, number five, is have quiet music. And I make sure to write quiet music because loud music, people, people really like music. You know, every single person in the world loves music. I don't, maybe not loves, but like they enjoy music. I don't think I've met anyone who's just like, I hate music. <laughs> um, but at the same time, when you get, when some, you have your passengers getting into the car, they don't want to hear like music blasting and just keep it low. And I'm in whatever you think is low, turn it a couple notches down. And this is just because passengers, like they want to get into a car and relax. The reason they're taking an Uber or a Lyft rather than taking the bus or walking is like because they want to have a comfortable quiet ride maybe they want to party it's late at night whatever um but if they don't request to like turn the music up or i mean you can ask them what their um you know preferences are for music but i would just keep it low um and this helps a lot with ratings and i would keep it something very neutral like soft acoustic music or like soft jazz or like some or like maybe even classical music but just keep it quietly and then i would always ask them like hey do you have a preference for music and usually they'll be like oh i don't care or they'll be like um yeah just turn it off i don't know um number six is a good smelling car um for me i like to use vanilla um and i would i want to say like don't have it too strong but just you know strong enough that they can that the passengers smell nice. You know, when you have people coming in your car, um, you know, whether you like it or not, you're gonna have some people who just get out of the gym and they smell really bad. 
Are you gonna have some people who smoke like a lot? You know, a lot of people smoke cigarettes. And maybe they're not smoking in your car, but maybe they're smoking right before and so they bring it in. Or, I don't know, maybe they just ate at Korean barbecue and, um, you know, if you've ever eaten Korean barbecue, like, you pretty much smell like Korean barbecue for like three days after you go out to eat. Um, so, you know, I'm just saying, like, people are going to bring in odors into your car, so in between rides, roll your windows down, try to flush out all that, all those fumes, and have, like, a nice air freshener in your car. This helps a lot with ratings. The next one, clean car. Clean, 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 clean. Can't specify that enough. Inside and out. On the outside, try to wash your car every couple days, if you can, depending on how, how much you drive. And then on the inside, um... You know, at least once or twice a day, go in the back seat. Um, I like to do it af after every single ride, and then after like you know, after my hour, after every hour or two, when I take like a ten or fifteen minute break, I just go in the back seat, wipe it out. Um, I have keep a little portable vacuum. You can get one on Amazon for like ten bucks or something, maybe fifteen, and just vacuum out the bottom. You know, get all the crumbs out and like. Try not to keep anything loose, like in the back seat, like I don't know, like a jacket or something, like a sweater for yourself. If you if you want to bring something, keep it in the trunk and have it like packed to the side. Um, I've I've uh, like I said, you know, since I do take Uber and Lyft a lot as a passenger, I've gotten in a lot. And like just yesterday, I got in and some, uh, yeah, just yesterday I got in and someone had a like a flower, not the petal, but like the entire flower. Um, like not the stem, but just the flower part of a rose it was just sitting in the back seat, like where I was supposed to sit down. And I don't know like who was, who brought that in or what, or who, if it was his or not. And I had to just get in and like move it. And yeah, it's not the end of the world, but like as a, for the passenger, it's just like, why is that there? And like who, I don't know, just, and like before one time I opened up the trunk to go, I was going to the airport for my luggage in, and someone had like a uh, a cigar, like a Black and Miles. I don't know if you guys know what Black and Miles are, but somebody had like, it's like a cigarette slash cigar. They were just sitting in the back seat. Like I had to move it with my, you know, I had to touch it and move it. And I don't smoke, you know, I don't like touching those things. And I don't know why it was there, but you know, I had to put my luggage in and like, I had to clear out all of her stuff to, you know, and the, the driver didn't even get out to like move it. So, um, like I said, like, it's not the end of the world, like, your pastor's not gonna die if they have to move something, but, like, just to get a five-star, you know, these are little things that you need to focus on. The next one, sorry, I just got a text. Somebody's, um, asking me about a video they want to make. She'll be in the next video soon. Shout out Fiona. <laughs> um, not the next video, but in a couple videos. Okay, um, the next video is, oh, ask passengers questions. I already touched on this a little bit. But, um, with just with being nice, but this is really, really important. If you guys ever have the chance to read a book, read a book called How to Make Friends and Influence People, or How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's by Dale Carnegie. Um, you know, he's been dead for a while, so this is not a sponsored video. But basically, he talks about how to make people like you, and the number one thing that he does, he does a few things, but one is like address them by their name, so call them by their name and also focus the conversation completely on them. Don't talk about yourself like at all. This is why people, you know, if you just meet somebody and you talk to somebody and, and then afterwards you're like, wow, that guy's so charismatic or like, wow, I really enjoy being around that person. Notice that they don't talk about themselves like at all and they bring up personal things about you. Like I know this, my friend's dad is really good at this. Like I hadn't even met him before, uh, but she, um, you know, she she talked about me I guess before and I went over to their house for dinner and um, you know as soon as I sat down he goes hey Dylan so um, you know I heard you do I don't know I heard I don't even remember what it was but like he pointed out something that like he remembered that my friend told him and he brought it up to me like first and it made me feel so comfortable so like you know obviously you're not gonna know anything about your passions before but like if they, if they, if you, you know, if they're a student, you might ask them, hey, so, um, you know, how's school going? Or, um, I don't know, if, like I said, if the pastor doesn't want to talk, this doesn't really um, matter, but if the pastor likes to talk, just keep the, 
the questions focused on them. If they ask a question like, hey, a lot of, you know, a lot of pastors will be like, how long have you been driving for Uber and Lyft? You might be, you might like say, oh, I've been driving for a year or so, or whatever it might be. But then like follow up with a question like, have you ever thought about driving for Uber and Lyft? Or, um, you know, what do you do for a living? If they're asking you about Uber and Lyft, that's like open door. Now you can ask them, what do they do for a living? And so just keep the conversation focused on them and try to use their first name like over and over again. And that's really gonna help with ratings. All right, tip number nine. All right, we're almost done. Tip number nine is don't break the laws of traffic. This is, you know, just drive legally, follow the laws of the road. You know, this should be number one, um, but you know, it should, it should already go without saying, as you know, you're driving a car, just if they're, if your pastor says, oh, hey, can you turn around really quick? You know, I need whatever. Like that way's faster. And there's no way to turn around. Um, just be like, okay, yeah, sure, I can do that, but you know, I'm gonna have to go all the way. I'm gonna have to find a, you know, um, you know, a legal way to turn around. Like one time as a passenger, um, that's exactly what happened. I was going to the airport and I was in an Uber pool and there was two other people in the car. And one of the girls was like, oh, hey, go, you can go that way, it's quicker. Um, we we're, were dropping her off at the house before we went to the airport. And the pastor was just like, okay, and he whipped a Yui and it was a double yellow line like there and then and then he had to like three point turn in the middle of this like side highway thing and then he like held up cars like up and it was like a 20 30 minute ride and up until that point it was um like super safe ride i really enjoyed it and then at that point i'm sitting in the back seat and i don't i think the car is going to come and hit us and so like you know he just ruined the whole ride so just follow the laws of the road you know just goes the same with like even right turns like if it's, if it's red um it's totally legal to turn right at least at least in california um you know on a red but if um you know if there's cars like zooming by just relax you know uh just turn right when it turns green or when like there's no one coming at all you don't need to be like inching forward like oh shoot i need to go i need to go the passion is like would much rather you follow the laws of the road and drive safely than making like any illegal or like, um, and this goes for speeding as well. Like if you're on the freeway, I always like stick to the right lane and go 65 if it's, you know, cause that's usually the speed limit uh, here. You don't even going like 70 you guys, like that's speeding and sure like everyone goes 70, 75, but when you're driving somebody in Uber and Lyft, they can easily just like take a picture of you going 70 on a 65 and sure that's illegal. You know, you might get deactivated or something. Just follow the laws of the road, it's not worth it. Like, you don't need to drive an extra five miles per hour just to, like, fit in with everyone else. Um, that's just me. Like, yeah, I will never break a law of the road for a passenger. Tip number 10. This one is huge. This is like a secret. I learned this from somebody who was a YouTuber as well, um, like, two years ago. I don't know who it is at all, so sorry, I forgot your name, but... Um, so I can't take credit for this one, but um, I guess now you can say you heard it from me because I don't know who that guy was. But basically what he said to do, and I do this for every single ride, this is a tip to make extra money, to get higher ratings, and to save you time. Uh, it's literally, like, literally, I think I'm going to make an entire video on this. It's like an easy way to increase your earnings by $10 per hour. All you do, you ready for it? All you do is call your passenger two to three minutes before you arrive. All right? I know it sounds like super weird. Like, why would I call my passenger? He already knows I'm coming. But a lot of times you'll get to your destination and the passenger is like inside. They're chilling on their couch because I think it's going to be a while. Or they're like at a restaurant and they're just hanging out inside or they're at, their, at the bar. Or sometimes like they're... There's like multiple entrances, like to wherever they're, they are at the restaurant or the bar, they're in the back, they're in the front, and you don't know exactly where they are. So this saves you time, but it also makes it really, really personal. And just call and be like, hey, how's it going? This is Dylan. I'm your, your Uber or your Lyft driver. And, you know, I'll be there in about two minutes. Where's the best spot to meet you? That's what you want to ask them. And literally right off the bat, this already starts the experience before you pick them up. You know, you don't have to like impress them while you're already in the car 
or you know in this way you, you, you know you can get a feel for them too like all right is this guy you know is he having a good day or a bad day and you can kind of prepare yourself before you start the ride you know one of the worst things to do is um you know you're just sitting there waiting and then your pastor comes in and you're like are you are you so-and-so um like you don't know if it's if it's them or not but like if you call them before and sometimes it even works out and they're like oh hey i'm already waiting outside and you're like perfect i'll be there in two minutes and it just it just saves you a lot of time but it also really really helps with tips so guys those are my 10 tips to having a five star rating on uber and lyft or 4.96 star or 4.97 or 4.98 or 4.99 <laughs> you guys are probably tired of me uh, rattling off numbers and I just want to end the video by saying that tips you know they they do matter but they're not the end of the world if you get a one star if you, or if you get a two star don't freak out it happens don't be like oh my gosh what did I do wrong you probably maybe you made a wrong turn which you know it's gonna happen or um, you know like I said maybe your pastor is having a bad day um, but yeah don't you don't need to like to uh, get too down on yourself and um, yeah, in a good way also, this is also an extra, extra bonus, is if you ever have like a, a bad experience with a passenger or like, say your passenger has, um, wants to smoke in your car and you are not comfortable with that and they ask you, hey, can I smoke? And you're like, sorry, no. And they're like, what? And they like, maybe they get mad at you or something. Um, chances are they're gonna rate you a one star. So what you wanna do is you wanna beat them to the punch as soon as the ride's over, um, pull over really quick and just um, put, uh, you can contact Lyft or Uber through the app about that passenger and just report them. Um, I think you can do that when you like rate them a one star. And that will just basically detect uh, Uber and Lyft won't count their rating towards you. Um, and also Uber and Lyft, like they reset ratings every like 100 or 200 rides. So it's not really a big deal if you get a one star. Anyways, guys, those are my 10 tips. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, uh, 10,000 subscribers and giving away a car, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, on Mondays, I'm gonna be doing live streams at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 or 6.30, around there. So um, feel free to tune in if you wanna say what's up or if you you know wanna chat with me. Um, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. If you wanna be an Uber or Lyft driver, Make sure to use the links in the description for that sign-on bonus. All right, guys, that's enough plugging. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day. This has been another episode of The Rancher Hub. Bye, guys.